In the month of April, my portfolio was a tidal wave of prosperity and delivered market-beating returns with not one, not two, but three stocks climbing over 8% just in the last 30 days, which I'll be telling you more about in this month's portfolio update. But first, in case you're new to the channel, my name is Ryan Williams, and here we strictly talk about dividend stocks and how you can invest in them to create passive income and reach financial freedom. So if you love dividend stocks and if you're on a mission to retire early, then hit that subscribe button. I'd love to stay in touch as we both continue to grow our portfolios and collect that cash flow. Also, leave me a comment below and let me know which stocks you picked up in the last month. I'd be curious to hear what you've been adding to your portfolio. Anyway, taking a look at my dividend portfolio tracking spreadsheet, which you can start using for free. There is a link to it in the description of this video, and I hope you check it out. But this tells us my portfolio is valued at $46,113, which is a new all-time high, and I am inching closer and closer to hitting $50,000 in this portfolio. In fact, if things keep going the way they have been, I think I'll be there sometime in the next couple of months, which is gonna be very exciting. But anyway, taking a look at how my portfolio performed, according to Charles Schwab, in the last month, I gained $1,264. And taking a look at how this was broken down between share price appreciation and dividend income, obviously most of the gains in the last month have come from share price appreciation, where across my entire portfolio, I gained about $1,100. And then in the month of April, I generated about $167 of dividend income, which is a pretty good month for me. And then in terms of percentages, this means my portfolio gained about 2.8% for the month, which is the second month month in a row I was in the green, and I actually jumped up a bit more in April compared to March, where I saw about a 2% gain. Not only that, but April's performance actually outperformed the three major indices. So where my portfolio was up 2.8%, the S&P was only up about a percent and a half, the Dow Jones was up about 2.6%, so almost there with my portfolio, and then the NASDAQ was barely in the green, only up 0.04%. And looking at this on a year-to-date basis, so far in 2023, I am up 4.4%, and I'm getting absolutely crushed by the S&P, who's up 9.2%. And the NASDAQ down here is absolutely crushing me with a gain of 16.7%. This is nearly four times the return that I'm seeing so far this year. But on the bright side, I am beating the Dow Jones, who is only up about 3.5% so far. And then zooming out once more, looking at the last 365 days, I'm up just under 4%. And I am beating the S&P, who's only up 2.7%. And I'm also beating the NASDAQ, who is a little bit in the red in the last year. But I'm still trailing the Dow Jones here by about 1.7%. But anyway, going back to my spreadsheet here, looking at my annual dividend income. This is sitting at $2,035, and I just hit $2,000 in here, which is a really cool milestone. But anyway, this means that just in the last month, my annual dividend income jumped over $60, and my recording at the start of the month of April was $1,973. So once again, quite a big jump in annual dividend income just in the last 30 days. And looking at my annual dividend income gains so far this year, I'm up $120. Now at the start of the year, I was bringing in $1,915. So this is quite a big jump in the first four months. And it's interesting because out of that $120 of annual dividend income that I've gained so far this year, over half of that came just in the last month. And this wouldn't be the case if I didn't experience that dividend cut from Intel, but you guys have heard me talk about that way too much. We don't need to go into it again. Instead, let's take a look at my portfolio's best and worst performers for the month, starting with Starbucks here at the top, which was my best performer in the month of April. Just in the last month, they jumped 15.8%, which is insane, which means their year-to-date gain so far is about 14%. And in the last year, they've jumped up over 50 2%. That's unreal. But anyway, my second best performer in April was Lowe's, who jumped 9.3%. And I'll tell you what, I really liked being able to buy Lowe's where it was about a month or so ago, just under $190 per share, which was a few dollars below my average cost of about $194.64. It was really nice buying below my average cost. But anyway, my third best performer was Snap-on, who jumped about 8.5% in the month of April after reporting on a really solid quarter where they beat on both the top and bottom line and saw a huge year-over-year -year revenue and growth of about 8%. But anyway, this brings me to the worst performers in April, starting with AT&T here at the top, who saw a 5.6% drawdown after also reporting their quarterly earnings, which revealed an undesirable dip in free cash flow. And then AbbVie also took a loss in the last month, about 4.5% as a result of earnings, where they missed on the bottom line and saw lower than expected sales of certain drugs like Renvoke and Skyrizi. But anyway, getting into my transactions for the last month, you guys can see here, I really didn't buy too many different stocks. I mean, starting here with Johnson & Johnson at the top, I I invested about $200 into this bad boy and picked up 1.23 shares. And you guys know me, I also have to buy a little bit of KRC. I invested about $160 into this position and picked up five more shares. And then for the first time in a long time, I invested more money into WP Carry. I spent the most money on WPC in the last month, actually, about $361 and I picked up five shares. And then I also invested $200 into my Roth IRA, bringing my total purchases for the month to $921.35. And speaking of my Roth IRA, just giving you a quick 
update on this portfolio here. It's currently valued at $3,834. And in the last month, I was barely up about 0.4%, which brings me to a year to date gain about 1.82%, very nice. But I'm still down all time. I'm down about 3% in this portfolio, not too bad. I'm only seeing a market gain of just under $150. And taking my $3,800 Roth IRA, which is bringing in $113 of dividend income and adding that to my $46,000 main portfolio that's bringing in just over $2,000 of annual dividend income. In total, my portfolio is valued at just a few shekels short of $50,000 and in total is bringing in $2,148, which amounts to about $180 every single month. And now switching gears and getting into my watch list, I made a couple of changes to this list in the last month. The first one you might notice is I actually removed William Sonoma from the watch list, but I didn't completely remove it. I actually just added it to my buy list, which means I plan to start a position in this company. But before I officially pull the trigger, I want to see what they report in their upcoming quarterly earnings, which they'll be sharing with us at the end of May on the 23rd. So I just want to hear the most recent happenings with this company before I add it to my portfolio. And then with that, I added CVS to my watch list here because it looks to be at such a deep, deep discount. I mean, year to date, it's down over 21% and is currently sitting at its 52 week low. So I'm interested to learn more about this company to see if it's something I might be interested in investing in. But anyway, guys, if you want to learn about some more stocks that are currently sitting in the bargain bin, then check out this next video right over here where I'm telling you about three more that are deeply discounted and all look like great pickups right now in the month of May. So click right over here to check them out and I'll see you in the next one.